everyone, I hope you all had a wonderful week. Welcome to Infoscope. I'm your host, Hannah Kim. Today we have some of the latest from the IT and science world. Let's first take a look at what's coming up in the first segment. Just a few days ago, Koreans celebrated Seol or the Lunar New Year. In Korea, this is the true beginning of 2017. So before we dive into some of the latest news, how about we take a look at some highlights from last year. The academic journal Science revealed its breakthrough of the year for 2016 and we'll bring you which discovery won the honorable title. We also have news about the One Table, One Flower campaign. Last year, Korea implemented a new anti-graft law which limits the value of gifts given to public officials to 50,000 won or about $45. However, one of the industries facing a significant drop in sales is the flower industry, which is responding with the One Table, One Flower campaign. Let's find out more about these stories next on Briefing Scope. Following the implementation of the anti-graph law, the flower industry is rebounding with the One Table, One Flower campaign, co-organized with the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. This campaign arranges regular flower deliveries to businesses on request, and within three months, 31 organizations have requested flowers for 45,000 tables. The academic journal Science selected the detection of gravitational waves which confirmed Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity as the breakthrough of the year 2016. Other finalists for the title included the AI system AlphaGo and the discovery of Proxima b, an exoplanet orbiting the closest star to the solar system, as well as the creation of artificial eggs for fertilization. The Jordan Research and Training Reactor, the first nuclear reactor built with Korean homegrown technology outside Korea, has been completed and activated. The Ministry of Science, ICT and Future Planning said that it would proactively support the reactor's operation and work closely with Jordan to develop technology and science in the nation. I must say, I am once again impressed with all those achievements made in science last year. But what about Korea? What were some Korea's hottest science issues in 2016? From the match of the century between Go Grandmaster Isador and AlphaGo to the creation of a Korean reference genome, we'll take a look at the top 10 science highlights of 2016 in our next segment. But before that, let's go back to January 3rd when a meteor shower lit up the sky in not just Korea, but other parts of the world. Those of you who weren't able to watch the Starry Show, don't be disappointed as there will be another meteor shower again on August 8th this year. Take a look at this next video for more details on this upcoming event. Here's Industry Inside. In March 2016, AI system AlphaGo defeated Go Grandmaster Lee Se-dol 4 to 1, sending shockwaves across Korea. 초반부터 뭐한 순간도 제가 뭐 앞섰다 이런 적이 한 번도 없었던 것 같습니다. The match highlighted the advent of the era of artificial intelligence and triggered the development of AI technologies at the national level. The magnitude 5.8 earthquake that hit Gyeongju, Gyeongsangbuk-do province showed that Korea was no longer safe from earthquakes. A probe into the deaths and injuries caused by toxic humidifier sterilizers, along with the detection of gravitational waves predicted by Einstein 100 years ago, also drew much attention. These were the top four science stories that shook Korea last year. Along with them were six outstanding research achievements. These include the assembly of the most complete Korean genome, the development of the world's first Pollock farming method, commercialization of blood testing technology for early detection of dementia, and the creation of an antibiotic against super bacteria. These stories were from a shortlist created by experts and were chosen via votes by 6,000 citizens and scientists. On January 3rd, the first space show of the year lit up the night skies. 
The meteor shower quadrantids was observed around 11 p.m. towards the northeast, and this year up to 20 shooting stars could be seen per hour. The quadrantids is one of the three major meteor showers observed each year, along with the Perseids in August and the Germanids in December. This year, a lunar eclipse will be returning in August after the last one in April 2015, which could not be observed due to clouds. The upcoming eclipse is a partial eclipse expected to take place from 2 to 4 a.m. on August the 8th. Comet Ankh, which returns to Earth every three years, is expected to pass the perihelion, the point in its orbit that is the nearest to the Sun, on March 10th. Residents in Korea will not be able to observe this passage, but with the help of an astronomical telescope, they will be able to get a glimpse of the comet. On June 15th, the Sun, Earth, and Saturn will form a straight line, making the planet visible all night. With an astronomical telescope, you will even be able to observe Saturn's rings. I missed the meteor shower in January, but I will definitely try to catch the next show, especially because it will be much warmer then. Now moving on to Tech a Peak. Air fresheners contain a chemical compound called surfactants, which is the subject of an ongoing debate regarding its safety. However, surfactants are used because they break down oils in liquids, and Korean researchers have now developed a technology that can make this process work in an eco-friendly manner. We'll give you more information on that in just a moment. But staying on the topic of being eco-friendly, did you know that plants can detect changes in the soil? In fact, a team of researchers in the United States used spinach plants to detect explosives in the ground. Apparently, this method can be applied to other plants as well. Here are some more details on this story coming up on Tech -a Peak. Spinach is a well-known health food. It's low in calories and filled with vitamins, fiber, and other nutrients. Now U.S. researchers have found a way to utilize spinach to find explosives like landmines underground. Any explosive buried underground will leak toxic materials into the groundwater flowing underneath. From here, spinach plants with carbon nanotubes embedded in the leaves will absorb the water and the nanotubes will transmit a visual signal if the plant detects any materials from explosives. When a spinach plant with embedded carbon nanotubes absorbs chemicals, the leaves show up in red on the infrared camera display. Within 10 minutes, the leaves can detect explosives and send a report to a smartphone or via email. They, they also are very efficient at uh, pumping water from, from the ground uh, through, through the roots to sometimes hundreds of feet in the air uh, with, with no additional energy added. The, the plant is a very good engineering pl platform for monitoring very large areas of, of groundwater. This technology can be applied to other vegetables as well, even without any genetic manipulation. It can detect not only explosives from a distance, but also other harmful substances underground. The researchers believe that this technology can be used to predict droughts and learn more about the underground environment. Surfactants are commonly used in everyday products like laundry detergent, shampoo, and cosmetics. It's a chemical compound that reduces the surface tension between two liquids. Despite their widespread use, there's an ongoing debate about their safety. 주변 2km 구간에서 건져낸 물고기만 100여 마리가 넘습니다. 조사 결과 오염 물질은 섬유 유연제를 만들 때 쓰는 첨가제인 계면 활성제였습니다. Now Korean researchers have developed a technology for mixing liquids and oils without surfactants and successfully applied the technology to an air freshener. The researchers mix purified water with oil extracted from phytoncide and fired ultrasonic waves of high frequency at the mixture, generating wave energy. This creates bubbles, and when the bubbles pop, the energy released splits the oil. The oil particles become as small as one one-thousandth the width of a strand of hair, meaning that they are small enough to mix evenly in water. Just 1% of phytoncide oil is enough to create a strong scent. 
일반적으로 저희가 제품을 사서 보면 오일 함량이 보통 10에서 한 15% 정도 들어가 있더라고요. 그런데 저희는 1% 소량을 가지고 분산을 하더라도 입자 굉장히 작아지기 때문에 그향 또한 진해진다고 생각을 하거든요. The researchers plan to use this technology to make not only air fresheners, but also cosmetics and medical products. Our gut bacteria live on the food we eat or the substances formed during metabolism. The secretions of gut bacteria act as signals for our body's immune system or the nervous system. Research has shown that gut bacteria can help trigger or prevent obesity, diabetes, liver cancer, and other diseases or disorders. Now a team of U.S. scientists has found that gut bacteria can also play a role in the formation of Parkinson's disease. Using mice afflicted with Parkinson's disease, the researchers inserted gut bacteria into one group of mice and left the other group as the control. The researchers observed that the experimental group exhibited signs of slowing down, stiffness, and tremors. Removing the gut bacteria can suppress the debilitating symptoms, even if the substances causing Parkinson's disease remains in the patient. The activation of microglia and the immune response that ensues after that aggregation promotes the alpha synuclein aggregation, which eventually leads to the death of dopaminergic neurons that then cause the motor symptoms associated with Parkinson. The researchers believe that changing the composition of the gut bacteria in our bodies can lead to a more effective treatment targeting Parkinson's disease. The research and its results were published in the academic journal Cell. Radiotherapy is one of the three main cancer treatments, along with surgery and anti-cancer medications. Radiotherapy kills most of the cancer cells. But the remaining cancer cells generate a significant amount of a protein called interleukin-4 cytokine. Korean researchers have focused on this phenomenon. If too much interleukin-4 is created, the cancer cells can turn malignant and lead to cancer recurrence or metastasis. 증가하는 인터루킨 4를 한 13배 정도 증가하는 것을 밝혔고요. 이 증가한 인터루킨 4가 암의 악성화에 작용한다는 거. The researchers also found that microRNA 340 and 429, which control the last step in protein synthesis, can suppress the generation of interleukin 4. The researchers conducted an animal test with their findings. They found that the recurrence of breast cancer in mice fell by 40%. 인위적인 어떤 화학 약물이나 그런 것보다는 훨씬 더 인체에는 덜 데미지가 덜 위험하다고 생각을 해서 했고 실질적으로 질병을 치료할 수 있는 유전자 치료제로서 마이크로 RNA는 굉장히 다양한 질병에서 활용이 되고 있는 상태이기 때문에 The researchers believe that using micro RNA along with radiotherapy can reduce the treatment's side effects. Although radiotherapy is an effective cancer treatment, it comes with many different side effects. But I do hope the latest research by the team of Korean scientists can help improve the efficacy of cancer treatments. Now it's already time for me to wrap up today's show. I know it's a little late, but I hope you all had a wonderful Lunar New Year with your family and friends. Don't forget that we will be back next week with more from IT and Science. Thank you for watching and goodbye.